Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. Um, I didn't get a chance to make a video yesterday. It was raining and messy and so forth. And if those of you remember, it was Memorial Day. And uh, folks, let's remember the people who um, go out and fight for us. Um, just quickly, I, I'm going to be talking about carburetors in about 60 seconds, but if you guys could give me 60 seconds worth of leeway. I have a cousin who left his legs in Afghanistan. Um, he was walking kind of like a pot by a pile of trash, and somebody pushed a button and blew him up, and he lost his legs. And I have a nephew who uh, suffers really bad from... Uh, post-traumatic uh, stress so um, y you know I was watching a TV show and they had one of the seals that killed bin Laden and he was talking about just before the mission they knew the mission was up and coming but they were talking about just he was talking about just before the mission and he thought it was a one-way street he thought it was gonna go in and he was gonna get bin Laden but he never thought he was gonna get back out so you know, whatever your politics are, they are. But uh, it, it takes a special person to be able to uh, to go on a mission, to say goodbye to your family, <clears throat> to go on a mission where you might not be coming out. And by the way, it's not like he's getting rich doing it. I, I think he said he was only making it in, in the 70s, which is a fair amount of money, but it's not like a CEO making hundreds of uh, millions of dollars or anything. So... Anyway, today's topic is carburetors. This is the Lakota carburetor that should be on the Lakota. And you guys see what that price is, right? This is a new carburetor, OEM. Um, so, homie ain't putting no 500 bucks into the machine. Um, used for these carburetors and as a matter of fact I should bag it up and sell it used for these carburetors they're getting typically somewhere around a hundred bucks to two hundred bucks depending on how good they are um, this carburetor does work it runs the bike will start and run on this carburetor but it's got a couple of issues it's got a leak here I showed you guys there's a diaphragm that um, it's a constant velocity carburetor, so there's kind of a diaphragm that pumps as you give it gas. Um, it uses vacuum to open the throttle up, and um, it has a vacuum actuated fuel pump richening circuit. So, anyway, um, I, I just don't like these carburetors. Whether the, this is a Keevan, um, I don't like this version. I, um, the Honda 250s use a version of it also, and I, I just don't like those carburetors. So, the carburetors that I do like are these. And in this case, this is a PZ30. And I want to put this on the, um, on the Lakota, but I don't want it to look like a piece of crap. And by the way, Take notice in the difference of price, right? One was close to 500, and I told you you can buy used ones for around 100. This is only 25 for a brand new car. Be careful which one you get, by the way. This one here has the cable actuated choke, right? This is a manual. I personally prefer the manual. To put it on the Lakota, it really should have the cable actuated one. I went manual. Anyway, um,. So I needed an adapter. This right here is 38 millimeters, and you could take out your fancy little Harbor Freight gauge and figure out that it's 38 millimeters. Um, that has a square flange. It ain't going to work. So you got to make an adapter. And notice how this thing's got this ridge right here. As you push it on, it kind of snaps in. And then it, it clamps around there. You put the clamp will actually settle down and seal around the outside surface. 
So what I did is I took a plumbing fix piece and officially this is known as a one and a quarter to three quarter adapter and they're about seven bucks each. Then I took a little piece of brass. Um, this was a two dollar piece of brass. I got it up at um, P&T Surplus. You can buy them on the internet, eBay, or whatever. But the important thing is, like this is the first adapter I built. Also, um, Bill Stanton sent me one. He started out with a piece of round stock, and he just turned down the end until it was 38, and he left this side bigger, and he drilled holes and put, um, um, uh, it, well, let's say he tapped them out, but I think he also put inserts in them, as I recall, so you could bolt the carb right to it, all right? This is the first one I built, and it's functional. But it looks like hell, and it's too long. By the time you put the carburetor and the air filter on it, it, it kept popping off. Um, I also want to save this. This is kind of my test one. And I wanted to build a better one, and I wanted to do a better job. I wanted it to actually look like, you, you know, reasonable. <laughs> Not, I didn't want it to look like a hack. So... Um, the first thing you got to start out with, right, because if you don't want it to look like a hack, i.e. these holds are all big and ugly, is you got to get the spacing between these two, and that's easy enough to do, right? Turns out... Um, I measured these about a thousand times, so I know exactly how big they are. These are 48 center to center. Right? You can, if you don't have one of those, you can use a fine ruler. And then what I did is I measured on graph paper 48, and it turns out, luckily, I lined up exactly to the end of the squares. And then from, other than that, I just needed the center, right? So I counted the number of blocks, and right at the center one, I put a dot. Okay. Then, now that I had these nice dots, I stamped them into a piece of cardboard, as you can see right there. And I put the cardboard underneath this thing and put it on a soft piece of paper and push these push pins into it. Right? So now I had the cardboard marked. And then it was easy because you just take this guy and you push it and you bang, bang, bang and it gives you the three dents. You drill the holes as I did here. Right? Then I used this metal piece. Right? to convey the holds onto a piece of brass. I drilled them, right? And then I drilled the two outer ones to size. I left this um, piece of brass was longer. You can see how it cut off. I used one side of it, so picture out here. And then um, I drilled the outer two holds. And then I used one of those bits that steps up gradually. Uh, I think I brought them inside. They're inside. I used one of those step bits to drill my way up to the right size so that I can put this all together. Um, this is a Keevan carb also. This is actually, you know, supposedly a nice carb. It's a big bore. It should, um, it should be more than enough fuel to run the, um, the Lakota. The problem I was, this carb worked. It actually started easy. I was able to pull start the bike with this carb. Um, easily, like first pull. So it, it ran good, but the, the bike smoked so much. And I, I just had the feeling that even though it ran okay, that this carb was drenching the motor with fuel. 
you, you know, luckily for me, I can work on a project for a while and then walk away from it and think about it and then come back to it and, and see what's going on. Um, also, after I do a video on a project, a lot of times I get feedback. And one of you guys um, in the feedback wrote, looks like you, you're, you're burning some oil there, but it, it looks like you're, you're also burning more fuel than you should be. And when, when I was told that, I said, oh yeah, I had, a, I had to fill this thing like over and over and over again. So I was wondering if I wasn't washing the cylinder walls which wasn't also promoting some of the um, smoke and oil consumption and everything else. So um, this carburetor really, I really wanted it off off that bike. So it's off. And this one's going on. The way the carburetor goes on to the motor, the way the adapter is going to go on to the motor, there's kind of a um, cutout area. So you slide it on and this seats into a, um, a, a ridge on the on the um, motor and then once again you clamp down to the outside so this won't be falling off like this one was so I think this this one will go on and stay on good what I'm gonna do and this carburetor is a tad shorter than this and then you kind of have the adapter right so this guy with the adapter on it all is maybe a half an inch longer. I think if I really, really want to, I can actually use the old air cleaner assembly, though the, uh, the mounts down there, you can see the bore is bigger on this guy. So, considering I don't have any plans on turning the Lakota into an OEM, I'm going to try to sell it for all kinds of big money or anything. It's a, it's a, what is it, a 2000, so it's a 17-year-old rat. I'm, I'm just going to, going to put one of those um, um, cartridge air cleaners on the end, you know, pit bike style. Um, should you buy those, go check out the dude put up a video where he shined, was shining a flashlight on the bottom of it. Let's say so you got the cone and he was shining around here and he showed how it wasn't glued together properly. There was a lot of air spaces which would allow you to suck stuff in. So, um, do take a moment to check that out. So anyway, here's the carburetor adapter. Um, this is going to be a two-part video. I'm going to go slam this on um, on the bike, bolt the carburetor up, um, I'm going to be able to hook up everything up so it doesn't leak fuel like this one like to do, and hopefully the bike's running really, really nice, and uh, I'm, I'd like to finish that up and get it ready to go out for a run. Anyway, folks, I want to thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing. Remember to keep your feet down, keep your heads up, and get out there and enjoy all your days. Bye now, folks.